You gonna be in the video? Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> Welcome to Appalachia's homestead. Tear with you. It's very cold. There's a lot of chores to finish. But I want to talk to you about something. So, I got on Facebook today and I was looking, just scrolling through my newsfeed. I wasn't looking for anything. And um, I saw from a, another homesteading group, this lady was on there and she was asking for advice. And apparently, let me get you set up better. You're set up on a, a nesting box with duct tape right now, right? Right. So, long story short, she wrote this long detailed thing asking for advice. And um, it stated that she's done. She's done. She thinks she's just done. Basically, she and her, from what I read, um, and I don't even remember the lady's name, and I'm not putting this lady down because I understand what she's saying. She's saying that she and her husband work two jobs full time. They've taken on the homesteading life. They have six children, six children. And when they get home, they are just worn to a nub. They don't, you know, they've got to go out and, and, and take care of things now. They can't leave their house. They feel tied to their farm. Uh, they have to take care of their goats. They have to do all of these things. And she just feels like she's done. So that struck a chord with me on multiple fronts, okay? So long story short, I want you to think about that. Now some of you are gonna watch this video and go, Pff. some of you are going to uh, understand what I'm saying by experience. But I think a lot of you, I'm hoping that this is gonna turn a light bulb on for you. I think it's very easy to watch homesteading videos and certain, certain really good homesteaders that put up red flags for you and say, listen, you need to think things through. You need to understand what you're getting into, okay? That's not somebody trying to tell you that they're big and bad and are better because they're out here chasing cows and milking goats and, you know, harvesting honey from their bees and doing all of these things and have 14 great Pyrenees. And that's not for you to sit there and to feel bad because you don't have these things or you're not there yet. I think people just want to share their life and, and try to help people and, you know, show different things, right? At least that's my goal. You better calm it down. And I tell you to think things through. You hear that? I hear distress. Do you hear that? I don't see distress. But here's what I'm telling you. It is no joke that depending upon how much you start out with, and depending upon how much you take on, I am telling you right now, you will burn yourself plumb out. Okay? I know some people see our barn and they see Cochise here or they see me milking a cow and they go, oh, I want to do that. Oh, I've got to have a livestock guardian dog. Oh, I want a jersey so bad. Oh, and hey, I, I, that's, that's good. Okay? It's a great life. But, you know, this, this boy right here not eating my chickens has taken two years, okay? The relationship with my cow out there has taken three years, okay? You better go down, boy. Hey, thank you. Thank you. No lovies unless we're calm. That's right. So, the goal here is to tell you to take it slow. It's nine o'clock. I smell like poop. My hair looks like this. Okay? There's crap all over my jeans. 
Pardon me if that's a bad word in your house, but I've got manure all over my jeans. My kids are just now finishing up their homework for today. Why? Because we homeschooled all day. I did five loads of laundry. Thank the Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that I have electricity because if there's no way in the world I'd run this life unless I absolutely had to without electricity with as much laundry as I do. Can you imagine having six kids? I only have three. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do. I kiss my dryer and my wash machine every single day. My dishwasher, I blow it kisses all the time. Because in order for me to homeschool my children and to make sure my husband can get up at 4.30 and go to work, bless his heart, and have a clean uniform to go to work, all these things have to help me. And it starts at 4.30 in the morning and it ends at 10 o'clock at night. I just made a recent video of me sitting outside at 10 o'clock doing a barn check. I'm not out here necessarily because that's where I want to 100% be all the time. That's not true. I like to cook. I like to go to town. You know, I like to watch TV. It's funny, I don't. You know, I like to catch up on Facebook. And a lot of folks ask me, they say, how are you on social media? I honestly need to film myself every day because my laptop sits on my countertop in my kitchen. I'm running. Hey, we're running all the time. You are 100% committed to this lifestyle when you're in it. Now, if you don't want to be tied to your farm, don't get animals that will tie you 24-7 to your farm. Find your land. Live on it for a year. Understand it. Plant a garden. Get your apple trees out and some berry bushes. Get you a nice chicken coop. Get you about 12 chickens. And work with that for a year or two. Guys, it took us three years to do a lot of stuff in a very small capacity before we could handle moving to this area and handling where we are, acclimating ourselves, and then we have grown. You're looking at me. Nine years later. Okay? Nine years later. If you come to the Great Appalachian Homesteading Conference, I'm getting worked up. John Pearson is going to be running a class early in the morning, the frugal farmer, and he's going to tell you how to work a plan. All these new people that want to start homesteading, they're not debt free, which you don't have to be debt free, but they, they either don't think they can do it or they think they have to go, they have to dive in head first in the rocky, off the rocky cliff. That is not true. You need to take it one step at a time because you're going to burn yourself out. It is a very overwhelming lifestyle. You are going to be an individual amongst a sea of people that are unlike you. You are. You're going to find yourself constantly wanting to grow because you love it, but you're going to have to resist that in some way. Okay, he's laying down. That's good. Look. You're, you're going to have to really... <laughs> You're going to have to really fight the urge to grow too much too fast. I fight it every single day, okay? I fight it every single day because I want this, I want that, I want to do that. And then I come out here at 930 at night and I go, my dishes are piled up in my sink. My boy's trying to finish up his homework. I had to run to the store. Uh, you know, I've got things to work on online. And a lot of these things are by choice, but you're going to have to understand that your schedule is going to be set for you, okay? People think I'm being smart when I say, okay, you got a milk cow. You ain't running to every, every Saturday next fall when you've got that cow to milk twice a day. You're not going to be running to Nayland Stadium and cheering on the balls, you know, all day long and all night and tailgating. That life is over. You might go to one if you get a farm sitter or somebody to help you out that day. You can't not milk your cow. You can't not feed your chickens. You can't, if you sell eggs, you can't not collect your eggs several times a day. I gotta be out here every time, several times a day collecting eggs for my egg customers, okay? I gotta make sure my cows have hay. I gotta make sure my cow is milked when she's in milk. I gotta make sure my great Pyrenees is being trained properly and be evaluated and reevaluated constantly. I'm getting a new LGD. Guess what that's about to throw me into? A lot of training. you got to be home. So you really need to think before you jump, is this the lifestyle I want to take on? And if so, how much of it do I really want to take on? Because when you're in it, you're in it. Okay? And if you get into it slow and you fi suddenly things change. You get sick. Your job changes. You have to move. 
Maybe you just don't like it. Maybe you just don't like it. Maybe just making some bread and having a small garden is about all you want to do. That is okay. I would rather you find that out early as you have moved slow as opposed to taking on land that you can't pay for, animals that you can't rehome. Okay? There's a lot of decisions to be made. So I hope this lady works it out. A lot of folks were trying to come up with ideas to re, revi, regenerate her interest in it and, her, and to encourage her. But folks, ladies, gentlemen, if your spouse is not in it to win it with you, I know we like to talk about how to encourage your, how to talk your husband into homesteading with you. Let's get real here. You want to, let's, let's, let's put you in divorce court while we're at it too. I think there's a meshing of minds when it comes to certain things. But let me tell you what. So let's say you get your barn and you have your cow and your 40 chickens and your milk goat and whatever you have, okay? And you have to start doing all these things every single day. That's going to stop doing a lot of the things that maybe your spouse knew you did before. That's going to cause some strife in your marriage. I'm sorry. This would be with anything. If they're not in it to win it with you, you need to take it on very small and very slow by what you can manage. Because think, whether they're in it to win it or not, things can change. I have a husband on several, on, on lots of days now that just can't do the things that, right now that he could do a year ago, okay? I'm doing it by myself. My kids are helping. He comes out here and does everything that he can. But I try not to ask too much sometimes because it physically wears him out. That's another whole issue. So I want you to think about slow, steady, evaluate as you go. Really be honest with yourself. A lot of these animals take a lot of time. A large garden takes a lot of time to tend to really for one person if it's depending on how big it is, depending on what you're growing. Don't feel bad you have electricity. As some folks were talking about, you know, because they're, they want to go off grid, but they're not there. And it's almost like they feel, you know, it's so funny. I have a conversation with Starry and we talked about it. And she's like, look, I don't have kids. Okay. I'm not in the same boat as you. She's I, I get it. I get it. And folks like that get it. Okay. Starry gets it. Okay. Uh, a lot of these folks, you know, they show you their lives, um, and, and it's a life that, you know, maybe they're not managing kids. They've become debt-free. They're 50 years old. They're not 30. They didn't do these things at 30. It took them 20 years to get there. And they started slow and steady. You're seeing a lot of people at a point, at this end point. Okay, your papa, who's 70 and is retired and doesn't have a care in the world and can, you know, wear his ball cap and go to Hardy's every Saturday and, you know, can buy a new truck if he wants to, it took him 50 years to get there. Slow, steady, evaluate always so you can pull back where and how you need to because there's going to be some times where you're going to have to. Okay, I hope this helps some of y'all out. It's a big discussion and that comes up a lot of times about what to do and how to do and whatever. Ladies, I'm telling you, you're in it, aren't you? You're in it. You can't see him. Here he is. What are you doing? Tell everybody good night. Come over here and tell everybody night. All right, we're going to put this boy up right over here in this fresh straw. Hope this helps you out what it's here for. Take it slow. We love you. We'll see you at the Great Appalachian Homesteading Conference on May the 6th. Won't we? Yes, we will. Yes, we will. We will. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. I'm going to have some tea, and I'm finally going to shower, and I hope I'm in bed by 1030, but I doubt it. Y'all have a great night. Okay, let's get the straw down. Come on. Do this. You going to help me? My ears are cold, coaches. <laughs>